Start with 0 and 1. Add them together and add the result to the list. Then add 1 and 1 together and add that result to the list. Then add 1 and 2 and add that to the list. Keep doing this and you generate a sequence that is known as the Fibonacci sequence, where you generate a new number by adding the last two numbers of the list. You can keep doing this forever and the numbers get infinitely large. However, something really interesting happens when you look at the ratio of these numbers. If you divide a Fibonacci number by the previous Fibonacci number, it appears to converge to some value. But what is this value? Well, it turns out it is actually the golden ratio, a very special number in math that shows up everywhere. In this video, I want to take a look at the golden ratio, and in particular, some of the ways to express it. We just saw that it can be the ratio of the Fibonacci numbers as it goes to infinity, or it could also be this infinite continued fraction with only ones as coefficients. Alternatively, it could be expressed as this infinite sum of nested square roots. So why does the golden ratio show up in all these places? Well, it has to do with this specific polynomial, x squared minus x minus 1. It turns out that anything that relates to this polynomial will also have a strong connection to the golden ratio. Let's start by looking at the connection between the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence. As we saw before, to generate new Fibonacci numbers, we can sum together the previous two Fibonacci numbers. To make this explicit, we can say f sub n to denote the nth Fibonacci number is equal to f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2, which are the previous two Fibonacci numbers. What we're particularly interested in here is the ratio of consecutive Fibonacci numbers. That is one Fibonacci number divided by the previous Fibonacci number. We want to look at what happens as n grows large, so we take the limit as n approaches infinity of f n plus 1 over f sub n. Notice that if n is very large, then the ratio between two numbers and the next two numbers will be very close. That is, if n is very large, then f sub n plus 1 over f sub n is going to be approximately equal to f sub n plus 2 over f sub n plus 1. Since we're dealing with the limit of n going to infinity, we can basically just say that these two ratios will be equal to each other. Now, to solve this further, we will use the recursive definition of a Fibonacci number. In particular, we'll use it on fn plus 2 to show that it's equal to fn plus 1 plus fn. If we plug this into our equation, we get a new equation that only involves fn plus 1 and fn. This equation is actually quite easy to solve if you know what you're doing. First, we'll split the right-hand side up into two fractions with the same denominator. Notice that the left fraction here is just equal to 1, so we'll write it as that. Now it's important to remember what we're solving for, that is, the ratio of the two terms. So we'll let x equal this ratio. That means that 1 over x is equal to the inverse ratio. But you'll notice here that in our equation, these two values are just x and 1 over x. Now we have a simple polynomial that is quite easy to solve. We'll multiply both sides of this by x and get x squared equals x plus 1. Now we'll shift everything over to the same side of the equation and set it equal to 0 to make this easier. Now we know how to solve for x, but let's graph it and see what happens. We see that as two roots, but the one we're interested in is the rightmost root. To find this, we can plug it in to the quadratic formula. If we plug in our values of a, b, and c into this formula, we get x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Now the positive variant of this is actually equal to the golden ratio which is approximately 1.61803. So there it is. There's the connection between the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. Before we continue, I'd like to cover why the golden ratio is so special. We just saw that it's a solution to this polynomial. That means that whenever you square the golden ratio, it is equal to adding 1 to it. That's a pretty cool property for a number to have and it makes calculating its square much easier. 
we can apply the golden ratio to the Fibonacci sequence. We just saw that as the terms grow large, the ratio of consecutive terms is approximately equal to the golden ratio. Now if we multiply fn to both sides of this equation, we get a useful property. That is, fn plus 1 is equal to fn times the golden ratio. That means for large n, we can calculate the next Fibonacci number by simply multiplying by the golden ratio. And you'll see, for f16, this approximation is very accurate. We've seen how the golden ratio is related to the Fibonacci sequence. But what about these two infinite expressions? How do we know that they're both equal to the golden ratio? We'll start with the middle one. What we'll do is we'll set the whole thing equal to x, and we'll expand it out to show more of the infinite terms. To evaluate this, we can perform a clever substitution that is only possible because this is an infinite continued fraction. If we look at this lower part here, it also goes on forever, and it's identical to what we set x equal to. So, if we substitute x into there, we get this equation. Now, if we multiply both sides by x, and then move everything over to the same side, we get a familiar-looking polynomial that has a root of the golden ratio. So, we know that the golden ratio is equal to this infinite continued fraction. Now, let's take a look at the infinitely nested square root expression. Again, to solve this, we'll set the whole thing equal to x, and we can perform the same substitution since this inner part is infinite and identical to x. So we get x equals square root of 1 plus x. Now squaring both sides gives x squared equals 1 plus x. And if we move it all over to the same side, we get the familiar polynomial that has a root of the golden ratio. Therefore, the golden ratio can be expressed by these infinitely nested square roots. These are just three of the very interesting ways to express the golden ratio. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider leaving a like.